Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. It's on this one. Kevin's from New York. Wait, How far is you... your radius at the moment? <laughs> No wonder you're going to have some matches. You've just put like a global radius. We have two chickens and a Christmas tree. (laughs) Want to go too? (laughs) I can't do it. Yeah, a great home weekend in Bangkok, dressed as uh, police women. But uh, let's move on to the other (laughs) question. Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new episode of That's the Tea with me, Mia Baker, presented by the Aramco Team Series. Now, Today, we are back at Centurion Club for the Aramco Team Series London, and I'm joined by two incredible women. We've got Kate Burton and Gabriella Partington, who are sat on the other side of the table today because you're not professional golfers, are you? <laughs> you wear a bit of one, won't you? Well, I used to play a lot of golf, but a long, long time ago. So I played for Hong Kong and I played for England. I was the most unlikely looking golfer to ever play for Hong Kong, <laughs> but I did represent England what on do you mean? quite a few occasions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know as many Hong Kong golfers with blonde hair and blue eyes, uh, but they took me on. And it was awesome. But yes, no, swap the golf clubs for a microphone now. And I have the pleasure to sit and chat with you guys. Absolutely. And you just introduced me as Gabriella, but I only ever get called that when I'm in trouble. Maybe you are in trouble Maybe today. Maybe I am. <laughs> it hasn't even started yet, Kate Burton, and we're already in trouble. <laughs> I think one thing that is important to know is that we do want to shine a huge spotlight on the women who work in golf because there are actually so many people who work behind the scenes here, aren't there? There really are. And there really isn't a better time to be a woman in golf right now, not just as a professional. And, you know, we're going to really look forward to seeing all these great athletes out there on the fairways this week. But as you say, the women behind the scenes in the industry working mm-hmm. at P54, at Golf Saudi, PIF. And uh, it's wonderful, isn't it? it? It really is. There's a great tail breeze and uh, momentum in the women's game. And that is a huge amount of thanks to Aramco that make all these elevated events possible. I mean, for the first time... I don't know how long it's ever been that women who play on the Ladies European Tour can pick and choose their schedule yeah. rather than go, well, I'll play on everything because there's only 18 events and I need all the money I can get in order to break even. But now they have a choice as to where they're going to play, what suits them and how they're going to get the best out of their game. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, the players are treated like they're at, literally at a major here because I remember when mm-hmm. I first started on this, I was like, this is great, girls. It's like one big girl's holiday. And they're like, no, no. You haven't seen some of the other events. Like yeah. some, sometimes I don't even get a locker. But from working in golf in the last two years, I've got to know a lot of the girls really well, the ladies. And honestly, the personalities there as well as the talent, mm-hmm. it's, it's incredible. And you get to know them so well. And it's so good that there's a platform to showcase their personalities now in a different way, in a creative way. Because a lot of people wouldn't know that just watching yeah. golf, say, like five years ago. And I feel like they're treated like actual athletes now because that's the problem with women's sport, I think, is... They don't have the same opportunities. They don't have the same money in it. And when they go to things, it's like going to a sports day rather than going to an actual sporting event. And this is one which I actually think people should come and visit, whether it is in London, whether it's in Spain, whether any country, because they are so good. Mm. And you can actually see the golf happening. You can speak to people. Hospitality is great. Like everything is impeccable. Yeah. I mean, how about the team series that you've got here? Looking at the setup, I've covered... Oh, 100 professional golf tournaments mm-hmm. yeah, as a broadcaster on the LPGA Tour and the Ladies European Tour. This, for me, has a major setup. It's a major look and feel. When you arrive, you realise, oh, this is this is different. This is not what I would yes. expect from a regular LET yes. event. And you look at the uh, support that the players get as well, you know, in terms of physio, physios that they've got. The caddies, you're seeing more regular caddies with the players, not just uh, mm-hmm. a member at the beginning of the week. Hello, would you come and caddy for me and pull my trolley? Those days are, are long gone. Now we're seeing it for the professional event and the professional sport that it is. So it's really exciting when you walk through the gates. And what we want, as you say, Mia, and Gabs is so into this as well, is getting more and more people to come and see these players because Ladies European Tour, they're so friendly. Mm-hmm. You can really, you've played in a few pro-ams. You've won the pro-am. Quite you've a few. won yeah. the tournament. <laughs> won the tournament. Oh, okay. I mean, she's already a winner of a professional golf tournament and been Literally. playing five minutes. We should be interviewing her. Yeah. <laughs> Love to. <laughs> but, uh, but that, you know, that's what makes it so special. And it was only, it was in Singapore where I was speaking to some of the guests that were attending that are members yeah. at the golf club. And they were saying this is the first time they'd been to a women's event like on this stage. And they said there was a men's event a few weeks before and they said they preferred coming to the women's. Yes. And the thing is they can, they can kind of <laughs> compare their game to the women's oh, as well, definitely. can't they? So that's what they like to see to break it down. And it only comes to their short game when they're like, oh, wow, they're so talented and they're so decent. And then obviously the event as a whole too, they really got behind it. Um, But yeah, like you said, the players are treated like they're at a major. You've got a great different 
equipment within the physio room. Have you tried one of them? Little the thermo things? things that give you like oh, compression on your legs. You can do with that though, oh, that's for sure. After this podcast, maybe, darling. Okay, we'll it makes you feel like you're going to fall asleep. <laughs> it does. Where they're quite, they're like, do you know them um, in the doctors, you get the arm pressure things. Oh yeah, okay. On, on the legs. Gotcha. gotcha. Mm. It's yeah. good, it's good. Right guys, so as part of the podcast, there's this thing called The Baker's Dozen. Right. I am Mia Baker. And we have 13 golf balls here all with a number on them. Have you listened to any of the other podcasts? Uh, yes, yes, I have. So you know the drill. I yeah. do. It's like the National Lottery. Yeah. So you've got to pick yourself three balls. I'll ask you a question corresponding to the number on my laptop. However, if you do pick number 13, you will have to do a forfeit. A forfeit. Ah. Okay. It's a bit early for that, isn't it? Well, All right. I don't know. <laughs> Depends, <laughs> Depends what's on here. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to pick your three go, go balls? Go. Get three oh, balls this time. Yeah, three. Sure. Oh, lucky us. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All at the same time? Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Pick yourself. Righty ho. Right, Gabs, what, what have you got? Well, it's a tough one, because this could be a six or it could be a nine. Damn, you tell me. Do you know what, nine? Because that's the shirt I played on when I played football. <laughs> I played when I played football. Oh, nine. Yeah. Number nine. Oh, right, sorry. What makes you automatically swipe left on a person? So, I, I was like, you know how to use a data now. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this is this is meant for me, wasn't it? Oh and these like them pop balls. Do you know sometimes when they used to fix these, like yeah, and then some of them That's were warm. Such a you question. That is yeah. So swipe left is when you obviously um, don't like you them. don't like them. I do that quite often actually. No, no explosion. <laughs> no, no, but because some obviously on the dating apps you kind of. It's restricted to their uh, radius, isn't it? So you can just be like, so say for instance, I'm here. <laughs> Kate's I like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Kate's like, I've yeah, been yeah, married yeah. for 30 yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is such a wasted question on me. Right. Or at least it's something I can't talk to you about. It's a lesson then, I'll yeah. give it a lesson. <laughs> yeah, go on, and tell so us. say if I'm in the area and I wanted someone around the area, oh, yeah. could one mile it. Oh, so you'd narrow the radius. You can. Okay, you focus in. That's it. Or you, if you wanted more options, you could go all the way to Manchester if you wanted to. <laughs> if you like the boys up north. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 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 men. <laughs> we should try it now. <laughs> all right, shall I? <laughs> He's got a phone. Can I can pass my phone over here then. <laughs> I'm going to get it and have a little look. Um, so what's the question again? <laughs> what makes you swipe left? Yeah, what would you yeah, like? What's really so off-putting about a girl? Yeah, like immediately swipe yeah, left. Like, oh, no. There's an option now where they can send voice notes. So some of the voice notes are like, you think they'd be a bit of a joke, right? You want to hear their voice. Yeah. And if they tell you a joke or it's something quite witty, it's, it's like, oh, right, you're quite funny. But if they're quite deep about stuff, do you know what mm. I mean? On the voice note, it's an automatic swipe left. But it's quite nice to hear their voice. Yeah, but I think voices are like yes or no. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And actually also you can tell a lot about a person by who they hang out with. So if they're in a group photo with all their mates mm. and their mates look a bit odds, you're like, Nah. Never judge a book by its cover. That's true. That's true. But then it's really hard on a dating app because the thing is... It's, that's what you have to do. It's, it's through, judge a yeah, book that's by what it is. It's cover. through like physical attraction, isn't it? So obviously you've got these little extra bits like the voice note, like I said. But I've been on dates a couple of times where you think, oh, I'm really attracted to them. And you meet them and you're like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> do they look anything like they did in the photo? They do. They're not catfishes because guys, you can't really... They don't really put filters on stuff, do they? Yeah, I suppose. Unless they're in front of a car. <laughs> yeah, unless they're in front of a car posing. That's not theirs. Do you know what I mean? That's a bit <laughs> icky as well. Do you know what? The list goes on. Do you want me to have a little look on it? Of what? On my on my dating app. <laughs> see what's on there? <laughs> like, this is I've got go. 500 okay, dates. It's loading. Oh, I've got a few matches here. Ooh. Oh, God. I'm lucky be... boys. <laughs> A lucky girl. Oh, nice. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. It's on this one. Kevin's from New York. Wait, How far is you... your radius at the moment? <laughs> no wonder you're going to have some matches. You've just put like a global <laughs> radius. Okay, you don't want to narrow down. I like multicultural, right? <laughs> you know, I like I do better in different countries than I do in England. Yeah. Kevin's Kevin's a bit too posy for me. Look. Yeah. Oh, he's got a cat though. Man with a cat. Man with a. P <laughs> be trusted. <laughs> I'd swipe left. I'm sorry. Okay. We're swiping right. left. It's right. a left from me. <laughs> Right, Kate, what go. number have you got? I'm going to start with uh, a snowman. Number eight. Number eight. Mm. If you got arrested, Ooh. who would be your first phone call? Oh, who? Oh. <laughs> so it would have to be my husband. Yeah, Big Ash. I think that's a good I choice. I think that would be the sensible <laughs> option because he's had to bail me out of trouble. But not oh. literally. Not have being you been arrested. To prison yeah, no, I've just had to think about that. No. Uh, but it would have to be my husband. But, um, you know, sometimes when we travel, we're on different sides of the world as well. So then yeah. it would also be my mm. sister. 
But I suppose it depends what I'm you know, going to be bailed for. What do you um, think is the most likely thing? Yeah, it that could be really maybe gosh. dancing on tables very late in a bar and uh, something like that. Or Seen that before. Speeding, <laughs> speeding uh, driving too fast. That's a, that's a possibility. But I think it would be... Big old Ash. Yep. He would, uh, he's got me out of trouble on a, f- a few occasions. So the big guy Thanks. would Thanks, come Ash. to the rescue. So thank you, darling. I've got two questions for you. Why is he called Big Ash? And two, haven't you dressed up as a policeman before? <laughs> yes, that was a long time ago. Sorry, How do you what? remember that? Yeah, a great home weekend in Bangkok, dressed as a uh, policewoman. But uh, let's move on to the other <laughs> question. Uh, as Both two questions are a little bit ominous. Big Ash, when you meet Big Ash, you're going to meet him this week. He's oh, coming to the golf. Really? Yeah, oh. he's six foot six. He's a go. big, cuddly Australian. Australian oh, teddy bear. Yeah. He's, uh, I'm five foot five. He's six Oof. foot six. And he's, he's, he's quite rotund. See, you know, this he's is got... the problem. The petite girls always get the tall ones. So then the tall ones are left them. with no one. Yeah. We get oh, this... I'd take being tall every single day. Oh, what we can't have. Yeah. <laughs> no, Just definitely. greedy, Kate, you are. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it all. All right, Gabs, what number you got? I'm going to go for number one. Okay. What is your biggest golf clothing ick? Biggest golf clothing ick. Mm. Men or women? Either. Oh, do you know what? I don't like a visor on a man. I do not. No. I, I, I just said like it reminds me. Watson, Ian Porter. What, should yeah, it be I mean, a baseball cap? I feel like they can, pull, they can pull it off. But I just, I don't know. Do you remember them hats that people wear when they go skiing and they've got the, the fake hair attached to it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's what it reminds me of. They don't wear the fake hair though, with it? No, I know it when someone might. You, never yeah, know. Well, you know what men are like. I'll let Olivia's boyfriend Todd know. Yeah, sorry, Todd. Wears- <laughs> Todd. I did think of Todd when I thought of that question. <laughs> he was the first person yeah, that came in my head. I think it's like a style thing. A lot of the times, there's so many golfers, you want, you want your own kind of personality and your own kind of bit of character mm. through your style, right? If you can't do it for your golf, you do it mm. for your style. Or some do both, but yeah, it's the visor for me. The visor's got to go. Yeah, really. Long socks on a golf course on a man. Yeah, I'm not I've sure about that. that. And do you remember the golf shoes years ago that had the tongue over it, like the flap? Oh, what's it called? Yeah, it's got an actual name. Has that. it? Yes. Oh, I don't know that. I, I wore those a lot when I was growing up, mm. but no, that's an absolute no-no now. Have oh. they come back in fashion? Yes. Damn it, I've missed the fashion. Well, they kind of have, and they kind yeah, of have a bit them. retro. Yeah, very yeah. retro. No, no, definitely long socks on men. Uh-uh. Mm. Yeah. Kate, what's your next number? I have number five, please, Mia. Number five. What is top of your bucket list? Oh top of my bucket yes. list would be in a golfing sense or just a general bucket bucket list <laughs> general bucket list a general bucket list okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll go with that one I how have... many buckets do you have <laughs> <laughs> that is a question not for daytime <laughs> daytime podcast <laughs> i would love to go and have you guys ever been to machu picchu yes. in chile oh you've been yeah you've been yeah. on the inca trail yes oh they tell me that. all about it after this podcast it was wonderful yeah that is South, South America. I've been so lucky with golf. I've been to Europe, to Australia, to Asia, where I'm based in Singapore. But I've never been to South America. And I spent four years at college in the States playing golf. But we never went south. And I would love to go to the Inca. I'm not sure there's many golf courses on the Inca Trail. Uh, but there's a few relics and there's an awful yeah, lot to discover. So And would beautiful. You yeah. So stunning. Oh, so but, have you been? Um, no, my mum is South American. She's from Brazil. Oh, yeah. You'd struggle out there. You're a vegetarian. Yeah, well, yeah. dance for yeah. <laughs> They eat a lot of guinea pig out there. Do they? Mm, it's a like a delicacy. Oh, good. Oh, okay. Yeah. I hope you went, that's not on the menu this week. <laughs> uh, no, Machu Picchu, it'd have to be. In- Inca Trail would be incredible. Inca, yeah. Inca, credible. Credible? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, going. No, 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 sorry. Nice try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's still practicing her puns. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be Puntington. <laughs> All right, Gabs, have you got one more number? I've got number 10, which is a great number, by the way. Number is 10. Okay. I do like this question. We asked it before in the previous episode. Um, what's your favourite thing about yourself? It's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, but it's, I quite like it. I like it when people actually have is it like to a, give themselves a, a compliment. Is it like a physical thing or is it something anything. Like about you? Could be physical, could be personality, could be anything, attitude. I feel like I like that I can talk to anyone and regardless of who it is, I won't change the way I am. Does that make sense? So say if someone's got like a, a big, scary, intimidating title, I'll be exactly the same mm. than how I would be talking to... Someone, Johnny. one of my mates down the road, or Kevin. <laughs> and that's <laughs> maybe not Kevin. That's so true, isn't it, Mia? I mean, we've played golf yeah. with Gabby. We've spent quite a bit of time with Gabby on these events. And you are, you know, you are what you see is what you get. I am what I am, Gloria mm-hmm. Gaynor. And you are, that's why people love you so much. But you can you talk to anybody. Yes. Like, 
I'm a shy cat. And you are just no. always there. And I'm like there behind you. I'm like, you go, Gabby. No you matter go. how important that person is. <laughs> All right, darling. You work, babe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally I the CEO of the Fortune 100 company. Yeah. <laughs> you right, darling? How's yeah. it going? Yeah. You yeah. right, babe? Yeah, and I give them two kisses and they think, who on You bring out the best in people. It's a, it's a real trait. Thank it's you. a real skill. Mm. I just think it's nice. I just think, what's the, what's the point of trying to be a bit different to someone who you think we yeah. want, I don't understand what's, what that's going to get you because you're not being yourself mm-hmm. and then they might not like you if you like that anyway no I no think. it's nice oh, I think Kate, they like you yeah can I ask you the same question mm. oh well I am a supermodel for ankles and wrists okay what? I sorry, have sorry, the sorry, nicest okay so if I had to choose but the bit I like about myself the most right. I'm going really superficial here look I've got the tiniest an- uh, wrists and the tiniest ankles Big Ash and Little Kate. Yeah, Big Ash, yeah. (laughs) And that's about the only two parts of my body that I like. So if it was a physical thing, I would go with, um, yeah, ankles and wrists. I'm, uh, you know, got supermodel qualities. But, oh, what do I like? I'm quite interested in people. Yes. I like um, what you're doing, and you do a fantastic job, Mia, but I'm always quite curious about people so not asking questions. Mm. So uh, Which is great for your job. Yeah, (laughs) but it helps. It does help. (laughs) But um, yeah, no, having a natural curiosity about yeah. other people, what makes people tick and, you know, peel, peeling back the layers, yeah. what, make, make, what makes them thrive. That's why having the chance to be here this week, hang out with you guys and also see all these brilliant golfers because Ladies European Tour, everybody's so friendly and they're really approachable. I've worked yeah. on other tours where you, you know, you're teetering along the range going, do I, don't I, do I go and ask them, do I go and have a chat? And you're like, no, 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 no I'll go up to them. And then um, with these players, they are so approachable. Yeah. So having is just so nice. Everyone mm. is so That's nice. what I didn't realise when I came for the first time. I was like, what? Everyone's yeah. so nice. I know. It <laughs> What's is that funny? about? Yeah, but yeah, okay. they, they want you on their team so that they can win the team yeah, events. Yeah, yeah, they know, you know what they're doing. Yeah, they're probably with faking your, with your it. Shots. <laughs> But you're the same, Kate. You're so friendly and approachable and all the things wow. that I've kind of... You aren't, don't be like that. And she's put herself down. So the only things you like about your body are your wrists and your ankles. <laughs> That's the only good things. Thank goodness this is kind of filmed because everyone can see the sexy lady you are. <laughs> and also, the best thing about this one, she is so well-spoken. And the first time I met you, I thought, oh, she's so lovely and she's so posh and she's so elegant. She's so posh. And you are still elegant. I don't live far from Croydon. Yeah, well, nothing you, don't, posh about you don't that. sound it. But you are just literally probably wilder than me. <laughs> I would say you are about. pretty wild. She's a Kate, wild, I'm wild not cat. Lie. Oh, okay, well, yeah. yes. Anyway, that's, that's, an, that's the other two. podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a podcast at 10 p.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watershed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Kate, what is your final okay. number? Okay. Oh, thank God it's not number 13. It's no. number 12, though. Number, number 12. 12, I've got. What do you think is the most essential life skill? Oh, um, to be interested in interesting. So the thing you like most about yourself? Uh, well, but, <laughs> I don't know if I'm interesting though, but I do. You are I interesting. I think it is really important. To, sounds sounds like a cliche, but to be curious about life mm-hmm. because then you get up every day with a natural curiosity about what the day holds. So I do think that people who don't have that curiosity that aren't cu- uh, about, uh, just a love of learning. Uh, and it sounds really mumsy to say that. And I say that to my children, like, oh, God. I always say to my children, darling, getting better never stops. That's it. But getting better it encourages you to, like, keep progressing. Well, and then it's more fun as well, isn't yes. it? You don't want to rest on your laurels. So I would definitely say getting better never stops. And to be interesting and interested. Mm-hmm. Quite a few people can be very interesting people, but there's not as many who are interested. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So to have both of those traits and values that you feel strongly about I think makes you also makes you a person that people like to uh, to meet and to hang out with and you discover so much about the world so much happening in the world right now yeah and I think it uh, opens up great. your mind as well and oh, makes you become sure less judgmental and more understanding yes yeah and it really does yeah. I think you say that brilliantly Mia I mean God, what do you you've only been playing golf five minutes you've got a podcast you've written children's books you oh, model obviously. for yeah, Adidas but I just like doing you, things because I find yes. them interesting yeah. Yeah. yeah but you're a hard worker you are a top grafter you're up there yeah, with but the, I love it don't I <laughs> is, that, is that what I sound like <laughs> yeah you sound oh, just like this low pitch voice like yeah my you kind of like just go like that and you just kind of kind <laughs> but of apparently <laughs> alright darling apples and pears apples and pears <laughs> oh my goodness no wonder I'm still swiping on that dating app <laughs> maybe <laughs> I should take my voice note off don't worry Ke- Kevin from New York is up there <laughs> yeah. up where <laughs> um, apparently your brain stops kind of learning or kind of taking information in as much w- from 27 onwards is that correct no oh god I've got no hope <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you that's did a it all long way up time to, gone you did it I can't believe that seven. Seven. where did you get that fat from I don't know maybe like a penguin <laughs> Yeah, I don't believe that in the slightest. No, no. I think if you mm. still have that natural curiosity, isn't it? You've got to work your brain. Mm. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a muscle. 
So do yeah, yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah, crossword. Yeah, you can remove that fact from your brain, uh, Gabs. Okay. All right. Next step, oh, look, step two now? of the pod. So we have an iPad, as you guys know, and mm. on here we have some delightful little photos oh, no. corresponding to each of you. So we've got three for each oh, of you. No. And you're just going to talk to us a little bit about them. <laughs> now we're going to start with Gabby. Uh, always. And this photo is <coughs> here. It says, debut on Sky Sports Golf. What a fantastic tournament it was at Hull. Oh, look at you there. The photo is a bit blurred. Oh, no, it's, we were good. Oh. Look at you. Oh, gosh, that was, I, I don't think I've ever been so nervous for something. I forgot about that. It Talk was like a last minute um, call that I got to, it was probably the first job that I did on TV, probably. Right. Again, I don't, I don't, never even worked in golf, like nothing. So I literally rocked up there. Look at the stripey what the event was. Yeah, the stripey top. I thought this is the most golfy out. It's actually a dress. It's a midi dress. Is it? <laughs> the most golfy thing I had. And, uh, I remember just the producer just being like, right, just go and interview some of the players. And you think, oh, God, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, what do I ask them? Yeah, like, what did you ask? Do you remember? I remember trying to be funny. And there's one guy called um, Tom Ford or something. And I was like, I just remember it being like, oh, uh, what great name there, Tom Ford. I bet you smell nice too or something like that. And then, you know, and then just, it was like completely like not... <laughs> Actually, say that I don't like, know, and then face. it was just yeah, because I just thought I don't know what I'm talking about, so I've got to try a different angle. And try that funny. <laughs> I can bet that Tom Ford has never been asked that question before. I don't, I don't, I think yeah. you're asking me about sunglasses yeah. or something. It's better than Tom Ford or something like that. Yeah. So anyway, like, what's like that? Go, go for oh gosh, keep up, darling. <laughs> Small brain. What can I say? Uh, yeah, there you are. That was from that job. So um, it's got me to here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't think it has. I'm going to archive that next time. <laughs> So this photo here, I think you look quite different. Um, it is exactly where we are right oh, now. Nice. Ramco Team Series, Centurion Club. Was this the first year you worked it? I think it was. Yes, it was. So actually. three years ago? Uh, this will be three, your third yes, year, right? It'd be, yeah, three years ago. I was blonde there. Wow, it didn't even look like me. Um, how was it working here? Cause yeah, it was, I mean, different. again, different. So obviously I said that previous photo from what you've seen, I said that was like the first job I did golf, but nothing happened from then on till this moment and also working on the Euro Pro. So when I actually started to work in golf, you kind of get thrown into the deep end because yeah. I was like saying yes to everything, which I feel like you've got to do, don't you? Mm. Oh, definitely. Out. Yeah. You just take everything mm. and then just learn on the job and worry about it later. So I remember um, one of my bosses being like, right, I put you to do the uh, on-course uh, interviews of reporting and I thought oh here we go again I can't be doing the Tom Fords again with the ladies <laughs> and uh, yeah again I was thinking they think I know loads about golf they're calling me this on-course commentator and I'm like how have I got to this stage I'm messing with my family like yeah. what do I do I'm a fake like they're gonna figure me out oh no so much doubt goes through your head so like, much doubt. presenting is hard because people don't train you no, no. it's like you want to do this okay crack on and you're like well, I think you can be trained. And I don't know about you, Kate, but so many people ask, like, where have, you, have you trained to be a presenter? What kind of courses yeah. have you done? And I said, to be honest, I feel like you've either got it or you don't. And other things you can learn, knowledge you can learn, but I feel like personality and, and your kind of interaction with other people, I feel like you you have that mm. or you don't. So f for that role, what I feel like I have kind of brought to golf is my on-course on interviews aren't necessarily golfy. Mm. I'll kind of talk about one golf question and then I'll leave it to more yeah. about them because it's more interesting yeah. like, if you if you turn on the goal from sky sports for instance you know what you're going to get from watching them play yeah, but you yeah. don't know that you know their mum's a famous artist or something like that yeah, do you know yeah, what yeah. i mean so yeah that was it feels like ages ago three years but it's yeah it's, it's got me to a good position now and now i wouldn't change it i love working in golf so much you know what it's everyone if you're a presenter has their own style and you shouldn't try and copy like you're so unique to being mm. so personable and talking about their lives and that's what people then expect when you're doing your on-course commentary. Yes. I'm much more like flatter. No, you're not. <laughs> but you're like not a bit more, all. like, I don't know how to describe me, but you know, there, Gabby's here. Oh, yeah. You're <laughs> like, I think yeah. you're like this. You're a bit of everything. I get you're well, awake. kind of a jack of all trades. Oh, no, no, but definitely master of none. Absolutely no, master of um, all. No, no, it's, it's jack of all trades, master of none, but master of all is better than one or something. Oh, like oh that. she's a poet too. Me. She's a poet. I just believe. I don't know if I said that right, but something like that. <laughs> Sounded good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> but 
No, no you're, you're good at everything. No, no, on course, though, um, it's great because it is interesting hearing from the players. And it, we also mm. like to hear stories, don't we? We do. You we know, love we grew up stories. learning, listening to stories, and we like to hear stories about players as well. You know, it does what, what does make them tick. So, yeah. yeah, it's a skill. You got it, Gabs. Thank you. You Thailand. have got so it. You. Oh, you're enjoy fantastic. It. I enjoy that part, but everything else you've just got got to kind of learn and yeah. I, I love watching Kate when she um like hosts like dinners and things like that because mm. she's so good at being herself but remembering stuff I'll kind of big brain I can't be given a script which Shandy aka mum knows she gives me a <laughs> script I rip that thing up I say <laughs> she's the youngest mum I know she is yeah. but she does everything <laughs> she, she does is. she yeah, is she a wonder everything. woman everything I remember being at an event yeah, and we'll I was like mum podcast yeah. at some yeah, point yeah. Shandy <laughs> Shandy's on it next <laughs> Shandy's on everybody's speed dial you know literally favorite. yeah she I have a question <laughs> oh let me ask Shandy <laughs> um, yeah I remember being at an event and I was like mum and everyone turned around looking at her thinking she can't be a mum <laughs> she's way too young oh sorry it's a long story actually younger than you yeah but uh, all right yeah. this is this is the final photo for you gabby okay sorry I'm i do on. not even know where to start with this i don't understand it you oh. know <laughs> she posted this on her insta what why have you got a is that a banana on your no, it's, a, it's a pasta oh, no, zanata it's a, oh, I mean, it, it, i'm with portuguese custard yeah tart. you are what you eat darling can you talk me through <laughs> the thought process in posting this? I don't know. In I went creating it, let alone posting it. So I went to <laughs> Lisbon. I was on my own. I went on holiday. I was there for two weeks, which wow. sounds a bit weird because people think, why have you gone on holiday by yourself? But I was... Liberating. Um, it was. I was actually in Dubai for about eight months and I got stuck there on the red list. And I was still paying rent at home. So I was trying to find my way back. So I went via Portugal, which was on the green list at the time. And I found a love for pasta donatas. I've never had one before. Oh, have you had one? No. Uh, oh, yes, I honestly, have. I walked eight kilometres to I this. I feel the need to wear one on my head. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, love them get so much. I don't know. She photoshopped yeah, her I face thought... onto one and posted it on social media. Yeah. Do you know what? I was probably learning how to Photoshop and do all of that stuff at the same time. I probably figured it out and thought I was really clever. I'm like really, really blended in. I wouldn't have been able to tell when <laughs> you were like Gabby Partington or a, or a Pasha Donata. <laughs> oh, yes. my God, they're so delicious, though. I feel like we should get some here. Actually, they do them in the. Um, they did at the hotel. Breakfast, yeah. They do them at they breakfast, yeah. I haven't actually had one yet, though. Maybe I got sick of them over in Portugal. Mm. But there you go. That was as simple as that. And just... the caption is, you are what you eat, followed by yeah. about 1,500 hashtags <laughs> saying oh, pastel, Gabby pastel, loves a hashtag. hashtag. I love like a hashtag. Badam, Portugal, hashtag Lisbon, bring the energy, girls. Capital <laughs> city, pastry, Portugal cake, Lisbon, Portugal. <laughs> All right. She's just because you're an influencer. Don't knock me or bash me, darling. Yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I don't know. I thought that's what you do. Hashtag stuff. Yeah, love it. So see, all the like. See, I told you, stop learning at 27. I'm 29 now. <laughs> it's all downhill. It's all downhill. All right, Kate. This oh my is... my gosh, what have you dug up? Oh Baldo's Angels. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> you have gone back us. a long way to get Faldo's Angels. 2014. Oh God, that is a long time ago. He is fantastic, Nick Faldo. And that was who uh, I was emceeing a golf date that he hosted in Singapore for Mastercard, I think it was, and we did a Q and A in the evening, a sit down mm. conversation. He is. Like, there are two golfers that I've enjoyed interviewing the most in the men's yeah. game, who give the most honest answers: Faldo and Colin Montgomery. Oh, are really? Two, yeah. Uh, depends Why? what day you get Colin Montgomery, because because they've played the game and they've now retired and they see the big picture. They, they realise they're not, you know, as competitive. You know, they're not competitive. He's a broadcaster now. That they're very honest in their answers, whereas most golfers still sit on the fence and mm. they don't really tell you what they're thinking. I remember asking him, actually, in that conversation, um, do you like Tiger Woods? No. And, and oh. you know, you could ask him direct questions and he was very honest in his answers about what he thought about things. And because he had so much experience, you know, six-time major champion, knows so much about the game and he's incredible, you know, he's incredible he's just so knowledgeable that you hang off every word and the insight that he has if you commentate with him he walks into the commentary box with nothing apart from the yardage book mm. everybody else has got reams of paper like three laptops up yeah. all the rankings he doesn't need that because he knows the game inside out and he has that in-depth knowledge of the players he's also quite quirky yeah. as well he's got a good sense of humour but yeah that was in Singapore with the legend that is Nick Faldo love him I actually I'm really embarrassed the first time I met him I didn't know who he was what oh, did you not? You're, new, you're still new to golf, though. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? So embarrassing. Yeah. And I'm like, like, been playing, though. Exactly. Yeah. You've only been playing. Yes. But yeah, I mean, I came into golf knowing zero about golf, like absolutely nothing. Okay. And everyone's like, what? You don't know Rory? You didn't know Sergio? I'm like, 
No. no exactly. I heard a Not Tiger Woods and that's about yeah. it. <laughs> he, wore the, he wore the best jumper when he won the um, the Open Championship, the Geometric George, the Pringle. When's Pringle going to resurface? When are we going to be going that brand again? So he made Never Pringle again. famous. Never. No. Only no. When you, <laughs> only, only stop when you eat it. right there. Yeah, stop acting your age. <laughs> you too and what you post on social is wild. Um, oh, no. Gary we're, we're and Kevin questions. getting into the Christmas spirit. Oh, God. Yes. My... We have two chickens and a Christmas tree. <laughs> so we live in Singapore and uh, it's pretty hot where we live. And I rescue chickens when I'm not commentating. What? For eggs, because I'm vegetarian. I don't like buying factory farmed eggs. So I bought my own rescue chickens. How many have you got? Yeah, well, ah, oh, well. A few less now, because Gary, Gary, and they were yes. they were cockerels those two, but we got them as chicks, and you don't know as a chick whether it's going to be a, a hen or a cockerel. Gary and Kevin turned out to be cockerels that wake you up every morning at five o'clock. Anyway, long story short, they've passed on now. But recently, my last chicken, Sharon, oh, yeah. was eaten by a two-meter reticulated python. It was huge on the oh, Sunday of the Aramco Team Series yeah. in Florida. I got a phone call from Big Ash. Big Ash. Uh, have you got the snake man's number? Sharon's been swallowed by a python. Oh my, that's scary. It having was. a python in your garden. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was a bit. You know, that, with young children, a couple about. of dogs, a cat. We've got loads of animals oh at home. Gosh. And so Gary and Kevin suffered a much better fate than poor Sharon did a month ago. But yeah, so I rescue chickens and they came in because they're free range. I want them to be happy. Very free. And they would wander in and uh, sit by the uh, Christmas tree lights. Sometimes I'd even put Animal Planet on for them. <laughs> Had a nice time. <laughs> they really are free chickens. It was a massive I saw the picture of yeah that two snake. meters two meters long does that not scare you yeah it does, but oh. that's Singapore I mean obviously you don't wake up and go oh, another reticulated python while I'm having no. my cornflakes no they come in but they must have smelt the the, um, the chickens God, it's, not often. No. it's not often big ash couldn't handle the python no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I would freak out so much God, we go from Nick Fowler to Gary and Kevin, the chickens. Mm. God, what is in store for photo number three? So this is actually a really nice photo. Oh, okay, oh, is it, it is. It's such a nice one. It's a photo that connects all three of us oh, together. Oh, yes. Hat girls. Oh, look. Oh, look at you. You're wearing a visor. <laughs> <laughs> but she's not a man, Gab. That's true. Oh. <laughs> yeah. she's on woman. the fairways. I mean, what a four ball that was, mm. playing with both of you guys. And then also one of my favourite players on the Ladies European Tour, Nick. Nicole nice. Garcia, uh, who's defending this week the she team is. championship. You in it, of yes, course, yep. part of her team. She's had a good season so far this year, but she is just a darling. She's so also nice. is uh, the resident bookworm on tour, and she's oh, got really? some oh, she's got some pretty racy reads. Yeah, if you want a good book racy to read, reads. oh yeah, we're reads. talking like you know Jilly Cooper style or a bit of a. Fifty Shades of uh, Ooh, the Fairways. Yeah. Really? Oh no, you Nicole just outed her on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Nicole. <laughs> she, she, she'll be on next. <laughs> She's great. She's she is fantastic, and uh, what a great player. But also, what's good about playing golf with her as well. As I say, so many of the players are approachable, but she's got a great knowledge of her game. Mm. So, I mean, if you if you ask Charlie Hull, who is outstanding, tied for second last week at the U.S. Open. Charlie knows exactly what she's doing with her golf swing, but she wouldn't really be able to explain it very well to, you know, to us guys. She just yeah. hits the draw, hits a fade, nails it straight down the middle. Uh, whereas Nicole has a very good understanding of how the golf swing and the mechanics mm. work. So her husband is Grant Veenstra, who looks after a number of players on Live Tour. So uh, obviously they're a great partnership together. But that's why if you were to get her in the Pro-Am, she would be a, a truly wonderful professional yeah. to have because she could say okay look this is why you're thinning out the bunker yeah. this is why you're not making great contact and um, not only that she's lovely yeah and a good golfer too yeah. she's having she a good season she also has the skill of knowing when to say something and when to not because obviously I played in a team with her yeah and when I had that final putt on the 18th which meant we could go into the playoff she didn't say anything to me she just let me do it as if I wasn't worried otherwise she could have put the pressure on me like yeah. you need to get this if you yeah. don't get this we're not going to go to the playoff but she didn't she just was like I'll let you do your thing. Just, You've done this before. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah it was see just, you shaking anyway. It was enough. You hey. were brilliant. That hey. punch you yeah. 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 on 18 yeah. to clinch it for the but, team. Do you know what you said? You said you don't give yourself gimme, do you? Never. Well, never. Play with gimme. Practice them. Because yes. in moments like that, yeah, you true. don't get a gimme. You don't get a gimme in programs. You don't get a gimme in comps. And That's all I true. think about it is practice as opposed to like trying to win yeah like yeah. all those moments where you're like oh I could get a better score actually I'm thinking well I could get more practice on my short putts that mm. if I were in a competition it's I wouldn't be able wrong. to get you are a real golf nerd aren't you I love yeah, it thank you yeah. <laughs> you're, my, 
you know, the most glamorous, edgy golf nerd I've come I know, across. I know, I so know. That's, that's great. It's a great it's combination, fun, actually. Yeah. I like the challenge. <laughs> All right, so as you guys know, I asked some questions on my Instagram. Thank you guys again for sending those in. Um, so. Oh, I'm nervous. Why are you, you, are you <laughs> looking at me as well? <laughs> what curious. have I done? I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly nervous. I can say you were nervous before because you don't have any control of what's happening That's right what now. That's what I mean. I don't. I can normally ask the questions in that you just think, oh, like you said, interesting and interested. Mm. But now I'm like, you got, am I interesting? Can I answer these well? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You are interesting. Kate, go first. <laughs> this is from at Jim Dawson. Oh, Jim. Obviously he's involved. <laughs> I know Jim. Senior radius. Uh, yeah, he's in the, uh, Jim is could be anywhere Jim in the is, world. Um, yeah. Happily married, Jim is not in the radio. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah. unlike Kevin. Yeah, yeah. unlike Kevin. How do you deal with a guest who gives you one-word mm. answers? And this is to both of you. <sighs> that is a tough one because I think I have been in that situation mm. before. And someone can be, you can't control <laughs> what someone's mood's going to be like. No. No, you can't. But the, the way is, obviously, you don't ask like a, you ask an open question, right? Mm -hmm. So you feel like, they can't give you that. Um, I'm not one of them people that has a list of like 30 questions in my head where I keep no. thinking about those questions. I, I very much tend to listen to what people are saying. Yeah. Which I is do the have, best way. Which is the best way. But when someone gives you a one word answer, um, I feel like what we started to chat about at the beginning of the podcast, I can I feel like I can talk for England. Yeah. I know exactly what you'd say. If someone gave you a one word answer, you'd be immediately in. One word answers today, is it? You're going to say anything more than that? Is yeah, that it's something, like, something. <laughs> yeah. You turn it Come back on, on them. You turn yeah. it back on them. And I just think if you're really over comfortable with someone, if you're just like, oh, right, babe, no, really nice, you don't give them the chance to be like that. Does that make sense? So sometimes yeah. I say, mm. when you're the hardest bit actually about doing interviews is asking them if they, if they want to do it. Because that's what yeah. you do on the Ladies European yes. Tour. And on other tours, you'll get a press officer that you get them to agree to. But it's actually almost easier in a way because I'll go up to them on the tee box and be like, are you all right, babe? How are you doing? You look great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it right for a little chat? Because if I just say to them, would you mind, aren't they have the option to say no. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. So once you've established that kind of bond and connection, it's, it's all right. Yeah, they know what they're getting into and so yeah. they kind of have to. What about you? What would yeah. you do in that situation? Because I feel like you... Oh, I can't imagine people giving you one word answers. No, no, a couple. A couple really? have, yeah. No, um, who's been... Oh, sometimes, it depends what day you get them as well. Yeah. But it, it, you're generally interviewing them if they've played well. Yeah. You're not going to interview anybody who shot 75. And only if you do interview that person, that's because they've been the star player that week or they haven't, and they haven't missed the cut, but you want to hear from them and what their thoughts have been. You try and warm them up before you yeah. do get to that point. But if you do and they say a one word answer, you say, well, what do you mean by that? Yeah, uh, I've had some tricky interviews with some players on the LPGA and on the LET as well. But I think, as you say, listening is so important. And I know if they, you're only going to listen to, to them say no. Mm. And you do have a, obviously always have a backup question. Yeah, uh, you have to have a backup have because if they give the one word answer, you've got nothing you're, oh, to go from. You're like, and you're Ugh. really caught off guard. Yeah. And if they say no, well, what do you mean by no? How, how is that so? Yeah. Uh, so challenge them on it a little bit. And then they go, oh. Well, now I've got to defend myself um, yeah. and explain what I'm saying. You're going to hold yeah. their feet to the fire because if they're going to give you a one word answer, then you probe that mm. and get them to explain what, why they why, why they are feeling yeah. uh, nonplussed about having this conversation with you. But be quick and generally, generally, responsive, fast. Yeah, yeah. no, it yeah. does catch you off guard, though. It does. Like, oh, OK. <laughs> this is from at Jenny underscore Drummond 27. Good friend. Love you. Um, can I hear Gabby do a Scottish accent? <laughs> oh, here we go. Jenny's Scottish, by the way. Yeah, she's oh, okay, Scottish. I, I've heard her try and do my accent before. I think she's like, you are babes. Like, and I'm like, I do not sound like that. Surely I'd get no yeah, job broadcasting. <laughs> really? Wow. You are right, babes? Yeah. Has it? Oh, what, a Scottish Gabby. accent? Oh, no, very. What, no, that's not your Scottish can accent. Can you do my accent? Not, oh, all right, darling. What? Yeah. Hey, babe, how are you today? That's no, too high. <laughs> it's it is more about like, you are. <laughs> yeah. Hello, babe. Hello, babe. Oh, no, is it? Hello, darling. Oh, gosh, you're so high. I don't want to sound like a bloke, too. Oh, you're awesome. Love it. All right. Okay, Scottish accent. Oh, God, I'm so... If they're like two, isn't it? Want to go to? I can't do it. Okay. I'm not an accent so, uh, I'm really looking forward to the pro-am this afternoon. I'm really looking forward to the pro-am this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> no? Is that Scottish? I don't know. <laughs> that just sounded bad. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, I always try and do my mum's accent because she's, like I said... Hang she's, on, your mum's from South America. I know, but... I, oh, I she's down from Scotland. <laughs> if you didn't know where she was from, I'd be like, okay. Gabby, what are you doing? And everyone's like, is your mum Chinese? And I'm like, no. <laughs> 
So I'm not oh. I'm not talented in that way. No, you're a Scottish no, accent. No, no, not you can. at all. You just did mine. No, you're not Scottish. Well, Where are you it's, from? It's, <laughs> you're, um, uh, no, no, I can't. I can. No, because I can only do you it can. like an Irish. Um, oh. Oh, the, no. <laughs> can you do that? That's oh, like an Irish accent. Oh, I'm trying to think of an Irish yeah, accent. What are you, what's the um, Scottish person oh, doing right now? The pro-am is taking place this morning. That's oh, Irish. That's Irish, isn't it? Yeah, so I can't do accents at all. Yeah. Actually, that's something I really want to learn. I'm going to go to a voice coach okay. and uh, learn different accents because clearly that oh, needs a lot Aren't you work. a voice coach? Oh, I am, but not on accents. Oh, right. No, no. <laughs> do, do, do. do a Scottish, does Irish. <laughs> no, a voiceover. I'm an Indian soap and an alarm system, but uh, I don't teach accents. <laughs> an alarm system? Yes. Voice okay. Please evacuate the building. Yes, now. Oh. <laughs> if it's so calm. And an you're, Indian you're... toothpaste as well. Yes, yeah. I do, yes, yeah, I do a bit of voiceover work. Yeah, so, yeah it's I feel like you'd be really good at reading a bedtime story. Why don't you read Mia's book? Yeah, well, yeah you, know, you could be my a really audio. great voice. Soothing. I think Mia's voice is perfectly good for that. So yeah, I do so love to do a VO because mm. I, I like to punctuate you, and she, use can I, my words. Can I say mm. one of the best things I've ever learned that as a broadcaster, as a female mm. broadcaster, and I was told this on day one of working in radio in Hong Kong, is that women have a, a tendency to, when they get a bit nervous and when you're on television or on radio or speaking on a public platform, mm. it's very easy to be to be nervous and to finish with an upward inflection at mm. the end. So, hello, and it's really good to see you at the golf today. And uh, how are you? I played really well. I went, oh, yeah, I shot 69. And so you want to always go from high to, to low. low. I'll be End right on the low. You'll be fine. <laughs> and both of you are. But uh, it's a really great lesson for yeah. all women that have to speak publicly. Mm. Is uh, if you say, and welcome to the Aramco Team Series London. Rather than mm. saying, welcome to the Aramco Team Series London. Because then people go, oh, What's has she there? finished yes. what she yes. said? And it leaves the audience in doubt as to oh have What's you finished that? make it more of a statement mm. so sorry that's a little that aside that is a good tip free go tip from yeah. high yeah. to low free whether tip. you're answering questions or asking them but um, it's helped it wow. served me well Kate yes. Burton online course is coming very <laughs> yeah, soon Nine ninety nine a package yeah. <laughs> hashtag <Hang on. laughs> voice coach <laughs> I'm going to have to do a lot of those <laughs> I'm going to pay the school fees <laughs> um, this is from at Jessica O'Neill X how did you guys get into sports presenting good question uh, I used to play a lot and then I decided that I wasn't really going to be a world beater at golf. I wasn't tunnel minded, didn't mm. have that single vision, that, that that vision to, you know, be out on the golf course all day long. I did do a course, at, a broadcast journalism course actually at University of Westminster. Mm. But when I lived in Hong Kong working, I just badgered the producer of RTHK Radio 3 and said, could I could I create a sports programme and found this dead slot yeah. on a Sunday afternoon where I hosted a show called What's the Score? Mm -hmm. And I learned everything I could about radio and then moved into television by just being persistent. Just contact people. All they can mm -hmm. do is say no. But if you're polite yes. and you keep on asking, say, and make yourself useful to them. So if you can, uh, yeah, can I help with this? Uh, I, I work for free for the first six months. Yeah. yeah. God, don't tell Shandy that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was a long time ago. But yeah. um, And I worked from 5 a.m. I had a, mm -hmm. a full-time job, but I then worked on the morning show from 5 to 7. And I worked on that for free. Yeah. And then they realised, oh, okay, we could actually use you. Yeah. So I think it's being, uh, hustle, being available. I love the You've hustle. You've got to hustle. Yeah. You really have. And make it easy for that person to use you. Yeah. And, and you've uh, got to want it then as well, oh, because God. if you kind of want it or you like the idea of it, but don't yeah. truly want it, you'll never be able to get there. No. Yeah. And don't email people. Pick up the phone. Yeah. That's a, you know, it's very easy, to, especially in this day and age, to hide behind uh, a, a, you know, a WhatsApp yeah. or an email. But that's but the, the polar opposite of presenting, though. If you can't speak to someone, mm. how are you meant to do your job? Yeah. FaceTime yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you get into it? We did, actually did a podcast on my own podcast show, Unsussed. We did. Shameless dig. There we go. Dig. That's a little link to that. There we go. <laughs> Wrong word, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Plug. You can explain it then. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll, I'll do the con like, kind of like condensed version of this. But again, I was the same. I did loads of work for free. Um, I started off at Sky as a runner. And a lot of people used to say, um, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I didn't know anyone. So... I did send ridiculous amounts of emails and obviously when you couldn't find numbers, that's all you've got. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally got an email back saying, come in for a chat at Sky Sports for a runner position. So I was like, brilliant. And uh, so I got a job there and then I just started obviously making the teas and coffees and just kind of learning in the galleries and things like that and just making loads of contacts like we spoke about at the beginning, like I just mm -hmm. spoke to everybody. And it didn't necessarily give me an opportunity to be in front of camera because they're very much more like go and get your experience and come back. 
but it meant that I met so many different people that thought about me in the future. So when I have um, gone and done my own thing, again, working for free, I used to drive back and forth to Southampton for every home game there and do like a fan station, interview fans outside the ground. I used to do this music showcase in Shoreditch. And I again, I used to go up, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, I thought I was more of a comedian because I was just saying jokes on the stage. And I, this lady who gave me that, she had trusted me to just go and do it. Again, it was free. Yeah. But then people were like, Stacey Solomon, Stacey Solomon. And I was like, <laughs> God, sort like, your life out. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking all my friends used to come and watch and, and be like, try and support me. But all those little things, you end up building um, almost like a database of, of kind of footage and stuff, which then I went on to send like a show and I put it on my social media and then mm -hmm. people would see and be like, oh, she's a presenter. Maybe we yeah. could use her for this opportunity, mm -hmm. which is how I got an opportunity. It was at a betting company mm -hmm. and just basically saying stats online yeah. as well as then it led on to working at Wolves. Um, so it's just kind of, like you said, you've just got to be persistent and just like push and reach out to those people. And a lot of the time you probably think you're being so annoying and these people are just going to like blacklist you from their inbox. But in the end of the day, I feel like if you don't put yourself forward for that, they won't know that mm. you exist. So you just keep going that way. And yeah. then yeah, it's just let me tear really. I need a way to showcase your abilities because it's really difficult for someone to hire you as a presenter if they don't know what you can do. Exactly. This is a huge risk yeah. because you're going to be the face of mm. whatever it is. Yeah. And the amount of people that come into Sky as a runner saying, I want to be a presenter. Mm. And they're like, oh gosh, yeah, join the queue. <laughs> and so many people don't yeah. do anything about it because they yeah. think, okay, I'll be a runner, you know, and then that would just lead to being in front of camera. It doesn't work like yeah. that. To this day, I still haven't had a screen test at Sky. So it's it's, it's, mm. it's almost weird. You just think you've, there's so much more that you've got yeah. to do behind the scenes, isn't there, to mm. get to that position. Yeah, no one's going to just pick you up and say, come on, let's do this. It's exactly. like you've got to go for it yourself do the work. and show yeah. them it. Yeah, but it's hard work. It's hard it? work. And you've got to do yeah. put in the arts. Yeah, and it's kind yeah, of stressful sometimes as well. It is, <laughs> it is stressful. All right, this is from Mum. At my mum. At Shandy Strong. Oh, oh. sorry. I was thinking my mum's now she's internet. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, wow, well done. And she follows me. That's yeah, even yeah, more of a wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is actually for Kate. Ooh, oh, God. What okay. was your first ever presenting job and who was it for? My first ever... <laughs> um, oh, God. First, first, first ever presenting job was presenting... God, where was it? So hosting or presenting, trying to... How long so ago was it? Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, that's a lot of I've been, uh, I've been in the 40s. the archives yeah. in yeah. their mind. Um, presenting as a lead presenter. So if we stick to golf, I first got the gig. I was working on the men's tour, actually, DP World Tour, at the Perth International Sixes. And I thought I was going to be sick before I went into the commentary box because I was the, uh, the first female lead. Obviously, they've got okay. great leads yeah, now. Yeah, you know, yeah. people like uh, Alison Whitaker and other girls, uh, you know, Iona Stevens and uh, you know, so many other good, yeah. good uh, women that work in golf. Sarah Sturk, of course, all those ladies. But no, this is just a commentary. This is a commentary role in Australia. And, um, and I was uh, the host. So I was lead, uh, lead uh, presenter. And I thought I actually was, I did dry wretch outside uh, because I was working on the men's tour and it was a man's event and I was a woman going mm -hmm. into it. And that's mm -hmm. about six, seven years ago now. And I remember going into the box and um, I was actually shaking and you can hear the whole, okay, we're well, coming to you now in mm. 10, 9, 8, Stressful. 7, a bit of being sick. Um, but the nerves were, were brilliant because it does galvanise you into being very focused and you do the work. That's the biggest thing is that if you do get given that opportunity to you know, get a gig as actually hosting or presenting, it's so important to put the work in because then if you do the work, you won't be nervous because you yeah. know you've done the groundwork. Uh, you know, fail to prepare, mm. prepare to fail. But it's hard not to be nervous as well. Oh, but nerves are good. You know, I know we all say that they are good, but they do that because they reinvigorate you and make you feel quite alive <laughs> and as to, oh my God, I'm about to go on television on a men's European tour yeah. event. Yeah. Uh, so that would be one of my first uh, presenting jobs. I've been commentating for a lot longer than that and doing on-course reporting and player mm. interviews. But that was a, a big moment for me. Uh, working on the men's tour. Yeah. yeah. Didn't get invited yeah. back, but it was a great day. <laughs> great week. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was the retching outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was, yeah. I know. <laughs> it is nice to know that you got nervous because sometimes mm. I feel like I'm the only person that gets nervous. No, like, I think everybody You guys does. look so put together. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, no, no. No, you do get nervous. Yeah. You get nervous all the time. You yeah. just have to almost fake it that like you don't. You like, have to so fake it. But really, you're like, <gasps> mm. yeah. This is from at Riley Mears 3. How do you seem so calm? when you have to interview such famous athletes? 
It's weird because they're like our mates. Yeah, <laughs> I think the main thing, Kate, for me is I don't necessarily get starstruck by people. Yeah. I think I can really appreciate their achievements in their careers. Mm. But because, especially something like golf, I've never really, I've only been in it for a short amount of time. So like you, when you didn't know Nick Faldo. Yeah. But obviously I knew. It's just another person It's just meet. another person yeah. that you meet. So I tend to... The only thing that really intimidates me is if someone's a bit off or they're in a bit of a bad mood because then I think I've got to try and uplift them as well as interview them and find out about them. Yeah. But to stay calm in that environment, I think it's quite easy because it's no different, like I said, to chatting to your mates. Yeah. Like I just I feel comfortable in any yeah. of that kind of environment. Interviewing people's not a big... For me, it doesn't make me feel nervous. Mm. I feel quite calm and relaxed. It's more being on the stage and just trying to yeah. squint things. Mm, you know? You're yeah, there for a I job like. as well. See, in your mind, you're like, yeah. right, I have to do my job. Yes. This is what I need to do. And it's non-negotiable. Yeah. Well, it, exactly. You're shining a light on them. And it's their favourite subject, which is themselves. It's true. Yeah. So you're asking that's them all, questions about themselves. Yeah. And as you say, you know, we're, we're broadcasters and that's our job. They have a job. They realise it's television. It's important. It's good for their brand. Mm -hmm. It's good for their profile. So I think when you, you know, remind yourself of those points, when you go into the conversation, it's like this is an opportunity for you too. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's being mindful of that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Has anyone made you nervous? Ernie Els. Has he? Yeah, Ernie Els did a few years ago because he just shot 66 in like the first round of the Singapore Open a right. long time ago. And he was really hot and he just wanted to get into the clubhouse. And this interview just took forever. It was a live interview, but the camera didn't arrive. There were oh, too many people watching. Yeah. Then the audio didn't work. And he's like, are we doing this interview or not? Oh. And his manager at the time, Chubby Chandler, who's quite well known in the world of golf, came up and goes, this isn't very clever, is it, Kate? Are you doing this interview or not? And so at this point, I felt oh, just no. I just wanted to die and just yeah. crawl away because Ernie's a big, imposing guy. Yeah. He was a star player, paid a fortune to be there. And I said, we really do need you for this interview, Ernie. You've played a brilliant round. Please stay. And he's looked at uh, Chubby Chan, they're rolling their eyes at each other oh, and going, no. are we, are we, is this for real? Are we seriously staying but It's here? not you, you're just the face no. of it, that's why. And then I said, so then nervously I said to um, John Evans, who was producing and he's in my ear and I went, okay, we're ready, ready John, whenever you are, can we do it now? And uh, he's gone, yeah, two minute, we've just got a two minute commercial break. Yeah. And I just, I nearly couldn't tell them. I went, just, just oh, two, more, seconds. <laughs> two more, two more minutes and they were like, oh, forget God yeah. 10 sake. seconds. They started to walk and they started mm. to walk off. And I said, this is important. You are the star player. And this is when I had to put my work hat on. Yeah. You are the star player. This is Singapore. Everybody wants to hear from you. Please stay. So yeah. they had to get quite serious about it. And they went, oh, okay. Yeah. I said, you will be done and dusted very, very soon. But please, this is really important. We are the host broadcaster. And then it did finally come to me. And I think in the interview, you could see me holding the mic and it's going like this because I'm so nervous. I'm like, oh, my God. And then I just threw him the softest question. It's like, Ernie, a 66 today. The putt certainly found the hole for you this morning. And, um, and then he went, oh. And then he switched on. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Kate. Yeah, it was a great day. Well, they day. want to look good in front they of do. other people. Yeah. He was a bit of an idiot that time. Yeah, but then yeah. I interviewed him the next year and he couldn't have been more yeah, charming. Okay. So you get people it's on It's stressful as well. Days. Like, it's hot. You want to go in. You've been out all yeah, day. Yeah, like, it's paid a fortune to be there. So we yeah. had to remind him of that yeah. as well. <laughs> you have to put them back in their box yeah. a bit. And yes, you're a hot Kate. Lady. <laughs> they did not want to talk to you. And, and one day and he was that, hot. Poor guy. <laughs> Hopefully Kevin from New York will realise that about <laughs> Yeah, you. he will. Don't you worry. He's wait getting for a lot of airtime, this Kevin. He is. <laughs> right, this is the last question um, from followers. This is from at current underscore 86. Is life as glamorous as it looks? Or do you have to budget expenses in moderation? Oh, these eyelashes, yeah. these yeah. nails. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, it, we're very lucky. We're yeah. incredibly lucky to do what we do. And it doesn't. I mean, it does look chaotic behind the scenes. Yeah, it yeah. is chaotic. What behind we the scenes. see, uh, what you know, people watching at home or listening yeah. will see or experience are two very different things. But wow, every day I wake up pinching myself and feeling yeah. very grateful to have the job that I do. So mm. it is. Yeah, I do think it is glamorous. But there are. I think it uh, looks glamorous, but it's also very stressful. And like, if you haven't got yeah. work, it's stressful. And trying to find oh. work and do the hustle, and Be then being freelance when you've got mm. too much work, you just yeah. want to have a break. And when you haven't got any work, you're like, I need to be working more. Yeah. So, but then you like the the freedom of being freelance, don't you? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And I think it is glamorous. I think I'm not even like scared to say. It isn't because people are like, yeah, you know, not all the time. It, it is glam. Yeah. And people are like, oh, so everything you post or whatever, is that what it is? I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> I like that half the stuff that they don't see is me literally waking up at 5 a.m., going to the gym three times a yeah. day, go on my Boris bike through London. That's probably not glamorous, <laughs> but I'm quite low key, believe it or not. Like, all of these things I love, but I actually sometimes I just want to sit and have an Andes. Mm. I don't actually want to have like nine course meal. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think it also depends how much you make the most of it. Like I would say I probably do more fleeting visits, whereas you would stay like the whole night and the whole event. Oh, yeah. Whereas I'm like, oh, yeah. I can't do it. Yeah, you can't, my you soap has to leave. We had last one, Literally, assuming yeah. we had last two years. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes, uh, actually, good. after a while, I think if you're working so much, like I had a really, really chaotic year last year. I was landing and then flying somewhere else the same day. It got a bit much. That, and as yeah, much as that's what it is. It's when it's just all the time relentlessly and you just get so exhausted. That's so when I think exhausted. it's difficult. Mm-hmm. But yeah. we're, we're quite social butterflies, aren't we? So we'll do the work and then we'll want to go out and have a good time afterwards yeah. and chat to everyone. So that's the only thing that probably makes you more tired because yeah. if you're like me, you, I'm getting up at 6am yeah. and just I'm on the go again. So, you know, yeah. sleep is key, isn't it, Mia? Sleep sleep is key. Oh, we yeah. have been discussing this. Mm. Not, not enough of it. Yeah. yeah. But you no, definitely get massive We highs. don't look like we've had oh, enough yeah. of it. <laughs> sure. The highs are unbelievable. Like, mm. can't even describe to you half mm. the things that we've probably had the opportunity I know. to do. Yeah, well, you've had a meteoric rise. Yeah, you yeah. have. You really right. have. Yeah. What do you mean? It's the thing incredible. is, it's, it's very easy not to see your own it. rise. Yeah. And it's very easy to kind yes. of look ahead and think, I want to be here when actually in the last three years mm. you've done so much from my. I feel like I'm just trying to put one foot in front of the other. <laughs> she, she was a scientist or whatever three years ago. What were you doing? You were doing something in a lab. I am a mathematician. I've got a degree in maths. Tell us about the science thing. The chemistry. Oh, no, I just worked for a genetic testing company. Oh, you weren't. Just the genetic testing company. Yeah. Oh, I did that. Oh, no, I didn't. No. no yeah. Nothing. I was like the science lab. I'm thinking of you in like one of them white <laughs> the jackets. Bu- bu- like, no, no, with no. a little pipette. We built, built platforms and apps. Very interesting. Oh, that's why you're so good on Instagram as well. <laughs> that's why, yeah. That's like easy for me. She's an all-rounder. <laughs> I used to love coding all the time. Oh, my God. Oh, that no. nerdy, nerdy, nerdy she me is coming nerdy. out now. I know. Yeah. Some people have it all, Kate, don't no, they? No, I threw away yeah. my advanced quant book the other day. <laughs> Do I was like, I can't have this well, amount. Well, you That's gone way over my head. Yeah, that's, you, you yeah. what bit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just read OK magazine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the sidebar of shame. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the final question that I ask everyone on the podcast. Mm. What is one thing people don't know about you that you wish they did? Oh, there's a lot of things I wish people didn't know about me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think it's yeah. like what you actually would like people yeah, to know okay. about you when I was younger I was really fascinated by memory and I used to read these memory books by Tony Buzon who sadly passed away mm. and I used to be able to remember an entire pack of cards I think I've read quite a few of those books They're like really the memory good. rooms and so, you go through yeah, yeah. And so I don't I can't, I certainly can't remember a pack of cards now but what I can do each week of a golf tournament is I'll learn the top 20 or the top 20 on the Rolex rankings off by um, through a memory yeah. technique that I use. So I found it quite useful Amazing. for golf. So each week I'll look at the Rolex rankings and go, right, and so you know, I could do the top 10 or Incredible. something. So that's, that, and that served me really mm. well. To have a good memory mm. uh, would be very handy. I think it's been slightly eroded by rosé and Prosecco and champagne. <laughs> but, uh, but no, but my golfing um, memory is still there. And um, yes. What um, memory technique do you use? Um, so I, it's an association. So what does number one look like? Number two, number three, and then I will relate a golfer to it. So number okay. two looks like a swan, and uh, oh. Nelly Corda is the world number two, who so you is use playing imagery this week. against. Yeah, and then words as well. So is she like riding the swan or something? Yep, she's riding the swan uh, down <laughs> the at the lake at the Centurion. <laughs> but the more weird it is, okay. it's called elaborative rehearsal. The more you will remember it. Okay, thirteen. So, uh, oh, I've only done one to ten this week. Oh, okay. Right. okay. Eight. Oh, you've done it already? Eight. Uh, oh, but she's not playing. So Hyoju Kim, because it's With a the snowman. snowman. I knew you were going to say that. She's peering out from behind the snowman. Hyoju okay. Kim. Seven. Seven is a cliff, and that's Minji Lee. So she's standing on the cliff looking out going, Phew, I'm a major champion. I'm pretty cool. Four. Four is, oh, it's a yacht, and it's a major champion this year. Uh, Ruining Ying. So she's on a yacht going, oh, I've just won a yacht because I've just won a major championship. Ten. Uh, that's a bat and a ball and a bat and a ball is Shi Yulin from China. I love this. So, what? Wow. So, no, I don't understand. So, what? so 10 is a bat and a ball. One is a... So yeah. she's visualised the number yeah. as, as something. A, as an object. Yeah, yeah as, as an, an object. object. So you use the same object yeah. the whole time. I'll tell you what number one is. Uh, and then associates um, a with the object. Oh, I think yeah. I'll guess. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, yeah, one is bat and a ball. But it's actually very helpful as a tip, top tip in Brilliant. broadcasting. If you need to remember things, uh, you could do... And shopping lists. And it's good for... Uh, working your memory as well wow. no matter what you do but if you have to re- remember questions to ask somebody yeah you don't ha- maybe have to write them down although it's good flashcards are great but to have it on your fingers you know one is 
you know, what that object looks like. Uh, two is a swan, three, four, five. Interesting. What's 69? <laughs> I've got that far. <laughs> oh, have I? Wow. Okay, okay. That was, oh, well, it thank works. Goodness it works, for works that. as well. <laughs> thank goodness for that. So where did you find that list? Online. Yeah, the Rolex rankings. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. So it is actually a, you're not actually made up the animals. <laughs> no. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. no. Oh. So this is an association she's no, made no, for herself, right. for her own brain. Right. On a yacht. <laughs> like you could think 10 is like that's a binary something. number. So you could be, mm-hmm. I don't know, that's what I would think about. Yes. Binary on like a board and then someone could be yeah. writing something. So the numbers look like objects. Right, okay. Okay, so yeah. five looks like a big hook to me. The number five is a hook. Okay. And that's where Lilia Vu mm. is hanging right now, I think. Why Lilia yeah. Vu? Though? Because uh, that's because she's the fifth world number five. Th- yeah. Right. You know, I'm with okay, you. I don't think I'm this is going to work I'm for Gabby. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is just confusing. I'm going to be like, let me do with this. So, Minji, you're on a cliff. Like, it's not going to work. Do you know what I mean? I got sad, sad Minji's here, not here this week. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good, good line. Yeah, actually. Yeah. I feel like I don't want to be asked this question because mine's just going to be really, really rubbish. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. So, cool. I actually can't remember the question. Okay, what is one thing... <laughs> better work on that memory game. Better work on yeah. that memory, get that memory book going. Yeah. <laughs> what is one thing people don't know about you that you wish they did? Uh, oh, I've got a lot of pe- things that people don't know about me, but I don't know if I that want you wish them to they know. Did. I wish they did. Um... Off the spot. Do you know what I'm actually? Do you know, it's not that I wish they did, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm actually a bit of a worrier. Are you? you are yeah. a worrier. Yes, you are a bit of yeah. a worrier. I'm aren't a massive you? worrier. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm really worrier. confident as a person that like everyone's like, oh, he's so confident. But actually, I really care about what people think. Mm-hmm. Like, not, not because I'm not being myself and I want people to, or I want to be validated in a way, but it's just more I want to do a good job. And sometimes I don't want to come across as needy, but I need that kind of. Feedback, because in this job you yeah. don't get feedback, do you? Your feedback is getting rebooked for the next job, almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So sometimes I think I'd hate to. I hate the thought of upsetting people, yeah. even though I feel like I'd never go out my way to make someone feel bad. But if I know that if someone's not replied, or even though I don't reply all the time, yeah. it's useless on my phone. But if someone's not, I think, oh god, they hate me. <laughs> they hate me. You naturally jump to the conclusion yeah, that they hate the conclusion. you. Then right. I've made up all this thing, and I think. Next time I see them, I'm like, you're right. And I'd be extra. I'm like, oh, you're right, dear. Here's a cupcake, darling. And then you think, and then they're they're fine. But I hate thinking like that. And everyone's like, you should just Mm. not care. And I'm like, Mm. but I can't be like that. Oh, yeah. But it's easy to say, isn't it? No, it's easy to say. So there you go. Everyone knows now. I guess my compliments. I complimented you every evening so far, haven't I? You have? (laughs) I I called you a rock star. She called me a rock star. And then last night. All right, granddad. (laughs) I was like, you're incredible on the yeah, stage. I was thinking, oh, I can see that. I knit. That makes me, because you probably know, don't you? You probably know I that know. I like walk away and I'm like thinking, God, I did such a bad job. But it is. I think it's because I know that people don't give you feedback. So when you do something good and I see it, I always make sure I go out of my way to make sure you know that I thought you were really good. Thank you. That's really nice. Because I feel like I do that to people. I say, good job, because I want them to do the same to me. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't even know if I want them to do it to me, but I just know that it. you don't get it. Right. And sometimes you that. need to know when you're doing good well and great job bad, on this podcast yeah. Well yeah. yeah great Thanks podcast guys, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's just a love fest here isn't yeah. it yeah. it always yeah. ends on a love fest after that question <laughs> yeah. it's so weird it? change the name of the podcast <laughs> to what? What? the Aramco team series love fest <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah. Maybe not. I don't yeah. know. Maybe not. Yeah. Can we take? Can we? Yeah. Yeah, 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 now yes, we know yes. what number one and number three is. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right. On that note, guys, thank you so much for <laughs> joining me on this. I'm gonna get back out on the golf course. I think. <laughs> I think you should. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining me on this episode of the podcast. Hope you have enjoyed it. Had a nice Definitely. time. I oh, loved it. I'm looking forward to a great week. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait. You guys can obviously watch it on the YouTube channel and on all of the podcast hosting uh, channels as well. And we will catch up with you very, very soon. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye.